chapter, and I'm going to start at the 12th verse. When you get there, say amen. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt. I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the blood, somebody say the blood, the blood. shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you. Then when I smite the land of Egypt, and this day shall be unto you for a memorial, and ye shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. Ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. Glory to God. I want to read that 13th verse just one more time. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over. Woo! And the plague will not be upon you, upon to destroy you. Glory to God when I smite the land of Egypt. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, Lord, we enter into your presence on today saying thank you. Father, we thank you for our life, for our health, for our strength. We thank you for the many miracles, oh God, that you have blessed us with. Father God, we ask that you will speak to us, God, for we are listening. Guide us and direct us through your word, God. Father, we thank you for it, and it is so. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 You may have your seats. Will you give them a praise? Ooh. Will you give them a praise? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Ooh. Thank you, Lord. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Truly, we honor our bishop, our overseer, Bishop Thomas Porter. Amen. Glory to God. For those of you that have not met him, he will be in the house this Sunday. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We honor the Lord. We thank God for every ministerial gift that is in the house on this morning. Each one, everyone, glory to God. Because we are workers, one to another. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. I give God praise. I give God praise. Thank you, Lord. We find out here in the book of Exodus that it was time for Pharaoh to let God's children go. They had been in bondage for 400 years or so. They were placed in captivity. And you know, the interesting thing was they ended up in captivity because God kept growing them and giving them increase. And the people of Egypt became fearful of the power and authority that the children of Israel may have. Mm. 
Can I tell you that when the enemy is struggling with you and he's doing things in your life, the majority of time he's afraid of the power that you possess. Glory to God. So he feels that if he continues to do things in your life that get you off guard, that takes your mind other places, you will not use the authority that God has given you. But can I tell you this morning that we walk with the power and of attorney of Jesus Christ. In other words, everything that Jesus did, we're able to do it in his name. And the word of God said, greater things will he do. <laughs> so we find out here in this chapter, it came down to the end. Pharaoh would not let the children of Israel go. Many plagues had come, the plagues of lice and boils and frogs and all kind of stuff happened. Glory to God. But it was something about this last plague that God told Moses to let him know. If he doesn't let the children, let my people go. All the firstborn sons the firstborn were going to be killed. Glory to God. And you know Pharaoh didn't believe that thing. Pharaoh's like yeah right. You know how we do sometimes when people tell us things you know and sometimes they can seem a little far fetched. True but far fetched. Amen. Sometimes you feel like they done stretched it a little beyond. Glory to God. Well Pharaoh must have had one of those moments but he realized after a while that what he thought was a fairy tale soon became a reality in his life. Glory to God. Because that night God gave the children of Israel some instructions. He said for them to kill a lamb and take the blood. Glory to God and wipe it over the doorpost. Glory to God. Put it on the side of the door and when the death angel rode, he would pass over. No harm would come to those that were covered in the house that had the blood on it. This is why it's so important this day that we be covered with the blood. You know, so many people don't talk about the covering with the blood anymore, the covering of the blood of Jesus. But to, this morning, I want to tell you that there is power in the blood of Jesus. We find out that the Old Testament was shadows and types of the reality of things that were yet to come. Glory be to God. And so in this instant, God was showing them something that if they had at the blood on the doorpost, the death, the enemy would ride over. He would pass them. No death would come into their house. No harm would come into their house. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And God did just that. Pharaoh let the children of Israel go. But then he got angry <laughs> and decided he was going to pursue after them. The enemy may chase you. He may pursue you. Uh, but he cannot overtake you. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. If you walk in your authority in Jesus Christ and in the power of his might, although the enemy may try, the Bible says no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. For this is the heritage of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me. What are you saying, Pastor Martin? What I'm what I am saying is the word is telling us that the weapons may form. The enemy may try some things. Glory be to God. But it shall not prosper even though he does come at us. He, that's all that's going to happen. Oh God. It will not prosper. Will not prosper. Glory be to God. I'm going over to 
Psalms. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to go. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. To Psalms. Let me back up. Let's go to Psalms 103. Thank you, Lord. Psalms 103, starting at the first verse, says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. What benefits? Do you know there's benefits in being in the Lord? He said, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, <laughs> who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercy, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Ooh, glory to God. The Lord executed righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious and slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. God is gracious. There are benefits. When we serve the Lord, there are benefits in serving the Lord. He is our healer. He is our redeemer. He is our deliverer. He is our way maker. He keeps doing great things in our life. But we've got to believe God. Um, Hebrews 11 and 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And when you drop down into the sixth verse, it tells us that it's impossible. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. For he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Glory to God. And so, if you want to be healed, if you want to be delivered, if you want to be made whole, you got to believe God in his word. Glory to God. Because his word is what we need. His word is our substance. You know, like you get hungry and your stomach go to growling and carrying on. Y'all, y'all, y'all. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Don't play. Glory be to God. And you got to get you something to eat from somewhere. Glory be to God. Because if you don't, you just feel like you're going to vanish. Sometimes you feel like you're about to die. Oh, glory to God. But you know, this is the way it is in the spirit realm. If you don't eat on that word, glory to God, there's a hunger or a thirst that comes into you. Glory to God, especially if you are a believer. Glory to God. God wants us to get into his word like never before and continue to eat and feast on his word because faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. Glory to God. And if you want your faith built up, because see, 
all of us have given a measure of faith. Glory to God. We have a lot of human faith in things. You know, we believe that when we sit down, the chairs going to stay there. Glory be to God. We believe. But we've got to believe in things that we don't see. Things that don't even make sense to us. Do you know God takes the foolish things to confound the wise? Things that, that people don't even understand. You know, they think you're crazy. You know, when you start they talking about what God has done, they like, yeah, right. I had someone tell me just the other day that they thought he was dead. They had put him in the mall, put a toe tie on his toe, and they thought he was dead. Days went by. And he sat up and said, excuse me, where am I? Talking about somebody clearing the room. <laughs> Glory be to God. But when you hear stories like that, you'd be like, oh God, that man crazy. But if God did it in the Bible, he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Why do we limit God? Why do we limit what he can do? If Jesus walked the water then, and Peter stepped out the boat and stood on the water, glory be to God. What makes you so sure that we cannot walk the water today? Glory be to God. If Jesus walked through walls, what makes you so sure that we cannot do that today? If Peter took a three days journey, Philip took a three days journey in one day. Oh my God. What makes you think? And he didn't get no ticket either, y'all. We ain't telling you to put the foot on the gas. But this is a spiritual thing. Glory to God. He moved them in the spirit to where he need to be. And so we have to become more and more spiritual beings. We are spiritual. God is a spirit. And when we worship him, we must worship him in spirit and in truth. Glory be to God. And so therefore, we have to realize the spirit part of us. You know, we're so tuned in to the natural. We're tuned in to the fleshly us. Oh, glory to God. But now we've got to tune in to the spirit in us. The spirit man. Glory to be to God. Hallelujah. Because when we tune in to the Spirit, we're able to do amazing and wonderful things. Glory to God. But in that natural man, that natural man can't do nothing. We think our natural man's about something. You know, because you were able to jump so high and make those hoops. You know, you think you're bad. Oh, glory to God. Just because you were able to kick the big, the ball all the way across the field and make a field go. You think you're bad. Oh, God. You have not tapped into yet the potential that is on the inside of you. Because each one of you, each one of us, has greater potential on the inside of us. And we can do great and wondrous and marvelous things when we put our trust in God. Glory be to God. Just like the deaf angel went over, glory to God. If we apply the blood of Jesus to our lives, glory to God, we can do wonderful and marvelous things things. Bless the Lord. Oh my soul. Who and all that is within me. Do you realize that when the children of Israel when they left Egypt and they wanted
wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. Okay? It was just a couple of days journey. Took them 40 years to get to the promised land. Why? Because of disobedience. Because of murmuring. Because of complaining. Oh my God. But look at this. Even in the midst of everything, God took care of them. Can I tell you today that God will take care of you in the midst of your wilderness experience. If you're going through something, trust God, because he will take care of you. Amen. I don't know about y'all, but he takes care of me. Do I have any witnesses in the house? Has God taken care of you? Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And what I want to say about the children of Israel, they walked for 40 years. And you know they didn't have no holes in their shoes. Their shoes never wore out. Their clothes didn't wear out. The Bible says, I believe it's in Psalms 105, that even none were feeble. In other words, they walked healed and delivered. Even those that may have been in Egypt bent over like this. When they started their journey, he straightened them right on back up. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. God will take care of you. Somebody tell your neighbor that God will take care of you. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm so glad he watches out for us in the midst of trials, in the midst of turmoil. If you just hold on, he'll work it out. Be patient. Wait on him. It's going to come to pass. Woo, seems like it's been a long time, but it's going to come to pass. If you just believe God, just believe him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The devil will talk all kind of doubt and negativity to you. He'll tell you, oh, it ain't going to happen. Look how long it's been. He'll tell you, oh, you ain't nobody. They ain't, don't nobody pay no attention to you. Glory be to God. He'll tell you all this kind of mess. Glory to God. But you got to rebuke that devil. Tell him he's a liar and quote the word back to him. Let him know that God said, I'm the head and not the tail. Woo. God said he's going to run my basket over. He's going to cause men to give into my bosom. Glory be to God. That's why I decree and declare that I'll never be broke another day in my life. Glory be to God. I say even if I'm down to a couple of dollars, I will not be broke. We got to get broke out of our vocabulary. We got to get poor out our vocabulary. We got to get sickness and death out of our vocabulary. Start speaking what God said. And when we speak what God says, things will happen. And things will change. Glory be to God. Is there one today that does not know Jesus as their Lord and Savior? Today is a good day <laughs> to accept Christ into your life. Today is a good day. For Romans 3 and 23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 6 and 23 says, For all have sinned. <laughs> says, for the wages of sin is death. And the gift of God is eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. For some reason, I've got to say Romans 3 and 23 again. For all have sinned. All have sinned. And come short of the glory of God. Woo! For Romans 10, 9, and 10 lets us know that if thou confess with thy mouth and believe in thy heart 
that God has raised Jesus from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. Confession is made with the mouth. Glory to God. We've got to confess the Lord Jesus and we got to believe unto righteousness. Glory to God. And then if you go further down in the 10th chapter, I believe it's like the 17th verse. May not be the 17th verse, but it says, if you call on the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. Glory to God, hallelujah. You shall be saved. If there's one today that does not know Jesus and you'd like to know him, just pray this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I'm sorry. I have sinned. I repent of my sins. And I believe that God raised you from the dead. And I accept you now as my Lord and Savior. Save me in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And if you pray that prayer and you believe it, you're saved. You're saved. Now you just have to trust God. Because sometimes we'll still mess up along the way. None, none of us are perfect. But we know where our help comes from. Uh, woo, glory to God. And if you just say, Lord, forgive me, it's done deal. He has forgiven you. But the thing about repentance is when you repent, you say, I'm sorry, and you turn away from that thing that is sin. Don't keep doing it over and over again. And God will help you. You've accepted Christ in your life. Find you a Bible teaching church. The word what really brings you through. God bless you is my prayer. We love you in Jesus' name.